This nugget is focused on backlog grooming. Going through the product backlog and making sprint ready stories. Backlog grooming has three main components. Prioritization, making sure the team, the product owner, the SMEs, anyone else involved with grooming are grooming the right stories and the right stories are the ones we're doing next. Consistent with the scrum methods, we don't want to be grooming a low priority story that may not be completed at all, or certainly isn't going to be completed within the near future, maybe not even in the current release. So prioritization is the first step in product grooming. That makes sure that anyone involved with grooming isn't going to find, oh, that's a really cool story. I think I'm going to work on that. We make sure we work only on the right stories, the ones we're doing next. And then once we know we're working on the right stories, we focus on story grooming, adding details, adding what is done. Again, with the focus of making the stories sprint ready. And finally, equally important is epic grooming, where we decompose epics into stories first round and then second round we decompose or we do the story grooming and again make the stories sprint ready. But before we go into the details of, of the grooming process, I believe it's important we spend just a few minutes discussing what is a well-groomed story? What is sprint ready? I believe a story is sprint ready, a story is well groomed, when less than a 10 minute conversation is needed. How do we determine when less than a 10 minute conversation is needed? I'm going to say common sense, probably a better explanation is experience. If the product owner, if a team member looks at the story and says, I have a pretty good understanding, I think I know what this means, if I could just spend a few minutes with the product owner, if I could just spend a few minutes with the subject matter expert, I think I could absolutely get all of my final questions answered. So it's final questions and answers. But the key is it's a few minutes. And again, it's experience, and again, I'm going to say common sense, and I don't, don't mean to be derogatory or, or um, bombastic when I say this. There is no precise measure for well-groomed, story-ready, or sprint-ready, but it's just, there's just a few final questions. There's a little bit of clarification. And the key is a little bit, the key is a few. And I think you'll find your team and your product owner very, very, very quickly come to a point where they just automatically can look at a story and say, yes, that is well-groomed, that is sprint ready. The other key measure is when what is done is testable and measurable. And I believe both criteria are important. The what is done needs to have a clear single statement of completion. That is testable. A clear single statement of completion. If your definition of what is done has 16 statements of completion, you probably aren't working on a story, you are probably working on an epic. An epic should be short, sorry, a story should be short, and therefore the definition of what is done for a story should be short. A clear single statement of completion 
and it has to be measurable. We need to know, be able to determine if the what is done was a success. And in my humble experience, I believe it's that last statement that is often missing in a lot of stories. Need to be able to determine what is done was a success. We can have a clear single statement. This story will be complete when da 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 da. But is it measurable? Can we absolutely produce results that clearly and unambiguously determines that the definition of done was a success? And when you have all of that in place, the sprint is well groomed, the sprint or the story is sprint ready. Now, I already mentioned this. We should not be grooming too far ahead. Two to three sprints maximum should be well groomed. So the highest priority stories only. We don't want to be grooming the cool stories. We don't want to be grooming the neat stories. We don't want to be grooming the stories that, oh, I've never heard of that. I wonder what that's all about. Let me go find out. The highest priority stories only should be groomed and we should be absolutely making a focus that only enough stories have been groomed to be completed in the next two to three sprints. And the main reason we do that is we want to be prepared for change. Recognizing that Scrum means we want to, we expect, we embrace, we support change, and it's far easier to change an ungroomed story than a groomed story because there's less time, there's less effort invested into an ungroomed story than a fully groomed story. Again, if you're going through and you're saying, oh, I don't think that story is needed anymore, and you look at the story card, and the story card is the absolute skeleton that says, I, as a business user, need to do something. There's going to be far less reservation of taking that story, on groom story, off of the backlog corkboard and throwing it out. As opposed to you have a fully groomed story. It has all of the details in the story. The definition of done is well fleshed out. And the product owner is saying, you know, I don't think this story is needed anymore but we've invested so much time already into this story. Ooh, uh, I think I'm gonna leave it there for just a little bit longer and make my decision later. That's not being scrum. That's being traditional development, working too far ahead. We wanna be just in time. And a final definition of when a story is well-groomed <clears throat> They are estimated for story points. So again, a well-groomed story has enough information in it to allow the team to go into an estimating game and quickly come up with the number of story points for the story. So that's the final step in grooming. And that's actually already discussed in the estimating nugget. So we're not going to go into details of how we do estimation, but the final step in grooming is estimating and assigning the story points so that it is then ready for the sprint plan part one. And probably another easy way of knowing when a story is well groomed is knowing when a story is over groomed. The story is over groomed when there is no conversation needed. Every detail, every nuance, every everything is on the story card. And you may say, well, why is that such a bad thing? Why don't I want my team to be able to pick up a story and see every detail, every nuance, every everything on the story card and go directly from taking the story card off of the sprint backlog and beginning work on it? It's because there is no conversation and the conversation is part of being Scrum. 
So besides the fact that Scrum says we need to have a conversation, Steve says the conversation is important because it ensures no misunderstanding. The written word is good, but the verbal word is better. There is far greater understanding to be had from having that brief 10-minute conversation with the product owner or SME than trying to infer every nuance, every everything from the story card because there's, the words may be misunderstood, the words may be misleading, there may be too many ands and ors or nots. There may be a, a sentence written in the negative that should have been inferred as in the positive and so on and so on and so on. So while the written word is good and critical, I believe the conversation is even more critical because it ensures there's no misunderstanding. So let me repeat what you just said to ensure I understood. Does that mean that, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> if no conversation is needed, I believe the story is over groomed and we've done more than just enough. And the focus of being Scrum is doing just enough. Similarly, a story is overgroomed when the end code is perfect. Our focus in Scrum is minimal releasability. Consistent with just enough. Our goal in Scrum is the first time a story is written, it's minimum releasability. Doing just enough work to get it into production. And then the business takes it for a test drive. And I don't mean test drive as in show and tell at the sprint review meeting. I mean test drive of using it in production. And more times than not, this minimum releasable code is all that's needed. More times than not, in traditional development, we developed bells and whistles and banners and flyers and pretty colors in the code and 80% of all of the code is never used. But in Scrum, we deliver minimum releasable code, we let the business take it for a test drive, use it for a while, and then if they need more functionality, they write a new story to augment the code. And that new story to augment the code is the same. It's just enough to add the just the next feature or two that that story that that piece of code wants and we move on and we go forward. So again, Scrum is just in time and minimal compliance because more times than not, minimal compliance is all that's needed. So now that we have an understanding of what well-groomed and over-groomed is, and note, I didn't get into any corny stories of going to a party and being over-groomed and under-groomed for the party. I kept, this, kept it to the focus of Scrum as much as my mind wanted to, to wander into those areas. We focused on well-groomed and over-groomed specific to stories. We then move into prioritization. Prioritization is the product owner's responsibility. The product owner knows the business needs and the product owner is responsible for translating those business needs into the prioritization of the stories. And as discussed, prioritization is critical because it ensures the right stories become sprint ready and we can s keep with the just-in-time aspect. Do not work on stories 
that are not on our immediate horizon because we're wasting time, at least we're wasting time today, because there's going to be no value derived from those stories in the next sprint or the next two sprints or the next three sprints or maybe even in the current release. So we want to absolutely focus on the immediate horizon stories. Two to three sprints out. Now you'll often have some stress with new teams in Scrum. New teams will be unhappy with only having two to three sprints sprint ready. It's the unknown, the uncertainty. It's making that quantum leap from traditional development to scrum development and this whole just-in-time aspect is going to be strange and foreign to your new Scrum team members and they're going to want to say, well, let's do a few more. How do I really know that some of the future stories aren't going to be dependent on these stories? How do I know that the priorities are set? How do I know? How do I know? There will be pressure to get sprint ready more. Our job as a Scrum Master is to do the pushback, tell the team, yes, I understand your uncertainty. I have, I understand the FUD factor, the fear, the uncertainty, and the doubt, but trust me, this just-in-time approach works very well in Scrum, and as you get more comfortable with Scrum, you'll be far more comfortable in this, and experience shows that truly experienced Scrum teams will often drop down to the one to two sprints worth of sprint ready because every time they look at a story that's been invested time and is sprint ready and the product owner takes it off the board and throws it out they have a collective moan saying oh there's more work that was done getting the story sprint ready that was unneeded we've got to stop working ahead we've got to stop focusing on getting future stories ready, let's focus on exactly what's on our absolute near horizon. So again, my experience is as teams mature in their experience in Scrum, the sprint ready will drop from two to three down to one to two. But it's ensuring that the right stories become sprint ready. As discussed, the product owner owns the prioritization. The product owner is focused on ensuring the immediate business needs are addressed, but the team absolutely has to influence the product owner. If the team knows there are stories that are needed for technical reasons, database structure. Most product owners are not going to have a clue that database normalization and database tables and database expansion is all those good database things are required. They're just focused on the business needs but as the team identifies a business need story coming up that needs database expansion, the team is going to influence the product owner that says, yes, I know you want to do business story 41, but we need to do technical story 93 first because technical story 93 is critical to ensure that the database is prepared for business story number 41. There will be other instances where precedence. We simply don't have the data available to support business story 63 until business story 94 is completed. So yes, we could do business story 63, but it can't be used. So there will be some absolute orders of precedence, again, that the team is aware of, that the team will say, understand your priority, but we substitute our priority for your priority to ensure that the business story 63 is best done. And there will be simple instances where there's synergy. There is another business story 67 that is a lower priority, but when we have the code open, there will be absolute value. Yes, I know I'm looking ahead. I know I'm looking at a, a, a story that really wasn't on the radar to, for sprint number three, but there's just absolute synergy. 
I can do that story 67 in half the number of story points if I do it at the same time as I'm doing business story 45. So the team influences, the product owner owns, and we ensure that we're doing the right stories at the right time through prioritization. So then we move into story grooming. And we've already covered the details of what story grooming is. It's enough detail that a 10 minute conversation completes it. And it's enough detail that what is done is testable and measurable. But when and how does the story grooming take place? Story grooming can be done individually by the team saying needs more work, by the product owner picking up a story and doing it, by a SME picking up the story and doing it. So story grooming can happen ad hoc and dynamically. And a lot of story grooming happens just that way. But we also would like to suggest that story grooming needs to be a little more organized. A lot of scrum proponents suggest that we need to build story time, or I like to use the term a grooming party into each sprint, or at least into every couple of sprints. And this is dedicated focus time to do a little story grooming. Evidence suggests that approximately 10% of the time in a sprint, or somewhere in the range of four hours per week, should be focused on specific grooming activities. Grooming takes time. And again, I'm going to avoid the, the equating this to my teenage daughter grooming in front of the mirror, trying to get ready to go out, but probably is equivalent. Grooming takes time. Grooming doesn't happen by accident. Grooming is a very deliberate, focused time. And grooming is very important, whether it's for my teenage daughter getting ready to go out, or whether it is for story grooming to get a story ready for the next sprint. Grooming takes time. Grooming needs to be deliberate. Grooming needs to be built into the sprint. So whether we're going to call it a chore, whether we're going to build a story that says, let's have a grooming party, whether we're going to just assume that the product owner has enough time in the 50% of the time that they are dedicated to working in our team space, grooming has to take place and grooming is deliberate. I believe having focused story time grooming party is the best synergy and the best usage of the time because it is premeditated and it will focus all of the right people. The product owner, the team, and the SMEs all get together for two hours at the beginning of the week and two hours later in the week. So it doesn't have to be four hours altogether because let's face it, finding the ability to get four, four, five, six people focused for four hours is very difficult. So break your grooming parties down into a number of mini grooming partyettes. Get all of the right people together and pick up the stories that need to be groomed. Almost like an estimating game. Find the stories that need to be groomed, take them to the side, and then pick a story. Someone, probably the product owner, will read the story out loud. The team will add questions. The SME will add clarity. Someone, again, probably the product owner, will scribe. And the story will get groomed. And I'm picking on the product owner as the scribe, not because this is a, a, a menial administrative task, but the product owner owns the story. The product owner is responsible for delivering the results to the business owner. So therefore, the product owner 
has to be 100% confident and committed to the words that are on the story card. So if we delegate the responsibility for updating the story card to someone else, the product owner has to have either total confidence that the scribe is putting it down properly, or the product owner has to go back and review the story card to make sure that it has been scribed correctly. So therefore, again, I suggest that the product owner probably is the best scribe, unless, of course, the product owner has horrible handwriting like myself, in which case you may want to have someone with better handwriting to do the scribing. But the grooming party, in my humble opinion, is absolutely the most time-effective way to get the stories groomed. Takes time, 10% of, of the total scrum time, probably in the area of four hours a week, split it up into a couple of mini par partyettes, grooming partyettes, but make sure it gets done. How do we know what stories need to be groomed? Well, periodically, the team is going to rate stories needing more details. As I said, we get our fresh cup of coffee in the morning. We're not quite focused on in developing our story. We wander by the storyboard. We look at the, the stories that are not yet sprint ready, but are in the high priority categorization. And we say, this one needs more help. This one needs more help. And we either flag it with a, a, a posty flag, or we put a star beside it, or we move it to another spot of the product backlog that says stories needing grooming. But the team will absolutely gravitate to the product backlog and absolutely gravitate to trying to get the stories moved forward to get the grooming done to give them the detail that they need. And as discussed, the product owner and the SMEs provide the additional story details and the what is done. And finally, a brief discussion on epic grooming. Epic grooming takes place at the same time as story grooming. So we don't have a story grooming party and then a separate epic grooming party. We will groom epics at exactly the same time as we're doing the story grooming. And epic grooming is, as already discussed in an early nugget, breaking epics down into smaller epics or breaking epics down into stories based on priorities. If we have an epic that's not on the radar for the next two to three sprints, we're not going to be breaking it down into smaller epics or breaking it down into stories. We're going to leave it as an epic on the product backlog for future consideration. And that leads us to the next key statement about epics. Epics are important. If we have stories, and I'm going to use the word stories, that are not on our radar. We don't even believe they're in the current release. They may be not even for consideration for six months, two releases out. Having all of those stories as detailed stories, I'm going to say clutters the product backlog. So while stories are the root of Scrum, epics are very important because it keeps the product backlog, it keeps it readable, it keeps it manageable, it keeps it from becoming overwhelming. Because it keeps the amount of clutter on the product backlog down and allows the team to focus on the immediate horizon. A product backlog that has 15 stories and eight epics is far less visually stressful than a product backlog that has 43 stories. When the team, when the product owner looks at that product backlog and has all of those stories on it, it can be just visually and emotionally overwhelming. Wow. There's still a lot of work. I wonder if we're ever going to get through this, where if we look at a product backlog that has 15 stories and eight epics, they're going to say, yep, we're under control. We have a plan. We're working towards the plan, and the plan is achievable. Work is going well. It just visually works better. So resist the urge to not create epics and actually 
override the urge to not create epics and force yourself to create epics if you're the product owner because epics are critical to making it work and certainly not part of scrum standards steve says make epics different and i use a different color card So again, for that visual representation, if I look at the product backlog and I see 15 stories on white cards and I see eight epics on yellow cards, yes, it still tells me I have a lot of work to do, but it's more manageable. And doing this differentiation between white and yellow allows the team to say, okay, there's not just 23 stories out there. There's 15 stories that are getting close to sprint ready, and there's another eight epics that are going to break down into a significant number of stories. So it, it still delivers the, the message of how much work is left without doing the visual overwhelming. And the other key reason I like to use the different colors is it's a, a message to management. Because we're keeping all of these information radiators very visible, if senior management, the business owner, IT management, an executive director comes down to the team area and gets used to looking at the product backlog and says, whew, 23 stories. Let's assume the average story has three story points and the team is able to deliver 12 story points per sprint. We're going to be done in six weeks. And they go back without talking to anyone saying project is done in six weeks. Well, that's not the message we want them to do. We want them to come down and look at it and says, 15 stories, good, eight epics. Oh, there's still a lot of work to go. And then they're not going to break down and do the methyl, mental math that says, well, an average epic breaks down into four stories and each story is on an average of, no, they're not going to go there, but it absolutely keeps the, the management from overreacting or underreacting as the case may be to the amount of stories that are visible on the product backlog and raising unrealistic expectations of when a sprint, when a release, and when the overall project is going to be done. So don't neglect epics. They're critical to effective management of the overall scrum process. This concludes our nugget on product backlog grooming. The focus of product backlog grooming is to have sprint ready stories. And we want to have two to three sprints of stories ready. So the team, so the product owner has a vision of what's coming down the pipe. We get to this by doing prioritization to ensure we're focused on the right stories and not focusing on stories that are future based and may not even ever be developed. The next step is the story grooming is adding the detail so that there's a 10 minute conversation left and the what is done is testable and validatable. And finally, we briefly discussed epics, that epics are important to ensure the backlog is managed. And we do grooming continuously, four hours a week. So grooming is a lot of work. And often we find a story time, a grooming party with the product owner, the team, and the SMEs is often the most effective way to establish story and epic grooming to ensure that we have the appropriate number of sprint ready stories for the team to move into our next sprint planning process. This concludes our nugget on backlog grooming. 
I hope this module has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.